This is Andrew Yankuski from Intomusic.ca and today I'm going to be showing you some tips in logic. We're going to be looking at how to create and manage send effects and also how to create group channels. These are two questions that we commonly get asked because it's not that obvious how to do them in logic and today I'm going to show you a quick way to set up these two things and talk about what they might be useful for. So today I'm going to show you how to create both send effects and group channels in logic. And the two are very similar in that they're both different types of auxiliary buses. We use a group channel when we want to send a number of channels, which is a, is a process that we call busing, along to a channel where they'll all be grouped together so that we can process them in series with a bunch of plugins, for example, insert effects like compressors, EQs, etc. We use a send channel, also known as an auxiliary send, when we want to be able to send multiple channels along to process them with a particular effect. So this would be typically called creating a send effect. And the difference between group channels and send channels is that when you send along channels to a group, all of their signal is passed along to the group and none of their audio is output by their individual channel any longer. When you send things along to a send effect, then the individual channel still will output some audio and then also audio will be simultaneously output through the send channel where it's usually processed with something like a reverb, an echo effect, etc. So, we're often asked how you do this in logic because it's not that obvious when you first look at the program. So let's take a look at how we can create both types. In this project we have a number of different instruments and one that would be useful to have an actual group channel for is these two acoustic guitar tracks. There's two tracks representing a stereo left and right microphone. So we'd like to group these together so that we could process them with compression, EQ, etc. So let's go to our mixer. Once we're on the mixer we'll see that all of the channels are automatically routed to the main stereo output on the mixing board, which is typically how things start off when you create channels on the mixer. If we want to create a group channel, we have to look at some place where we can send along this audio in an auxiliary way. We can bus it to a group channel. There's two places that you can send audio from each channel on the mixer. The first is through the send slots, but these are used for send effects, which we'll be looking at in a few moments. For creating a group channel, we have to look at the input and output section. The input slot is up top, but then the output slot is below. We can see that currently on this Acoustic Guitar 1 channel, the output is being sent to the stereo out, which is the main stereo output in Logic's mixer. Let's change this so it sends out to a group before going to the stereo out. We click here, we go down to bus, and then we basically can here send to a bus. We have a list of a number of buses. We can choose the first one on the list since we don't have any setup already. And now what we see is that the output of this channel is sent along to something called Auxiliary 1. Okay, So let's name this channel. We want this to be our acoustic guitar group. One thing that I like to do to make things easy to manage in my groups is I use all capital letters, all uppercase letters, to denote the group. So we'll call this Acoustic Guitar, all in capital letters. So now we've sent one of the two channels that we want to go along to the group. The next channel is the Acoustic Guitar 2. We're going to click on the output for Acoustic Guitar 2, we'll go down to the bus, and then we'll assign that to the same channel, to bus 1, which we can see now is also indicated by what I named it, which is Acoustic Guitar. That makes it much easier to remember what you're sending to than having to memorize buses when you have a bunch of them set up. So now what we've done is we've passed the audio from this Acoustic Guitar all along to this group channel. So when we solo this group channel, the two channels of the Acoustic Guitar will be soloed. When we mute it, they'll be muted and they won't pass any of their audio out their own individual outputs. All of their audio is entirely passed along to the group channel. Now, the next thing we might want to try to do is to pass some audio along to a send effect, for example, like a reverb effect. So this is a different use of sending. Let's take a look at how we might like to do that. For example, we might like to take our lead vocal, which is this track on the mixer here, Audio 18, we might want to send that off to a reverb effect. So, in this case, we don't use the input and output slots like we did with the group channels. In this case, we use the send slots. And it's a very, very similar process. We'll pick the first send slot. We'll click on that. We'll see that our option is to go down to a bus. We see that bus 1 is already the acoustic guitar, so we need to create something new. We'll create bus 2. So now, what we'll notice is, is that bus 2 shows up in this slot, and it's kind of highlighted in a sort of a teal color. And then next to it, is a slot is basically a dial that allows us to control the amount of the send and it's measured in decibels from minus infinity which is no signal being sent out to the new channel that we created at all through to even a positive amount of gain. 
plus 6 is the maximum amount. So that controls whether we're sending any level to this new channel. So if it's at minus infinity, we're not sending any level at all. And if so, how much? So let's go over to auxiliary 2. Let's say that this is going to be a reverb. So we'll call this reverb. And then what we would do is we would load on this channel into its inserts, we'd load up a reverb plugin. So if we go down to the reverb plugins here, we can find something like the platinum verb, load that up in stereo. Platinum verb pops up. We could then set it up with a preset of some sort, right? Load the preset that we wish, set it up how we like, close the plugin out. So now basically our send channel, which is our reverb channel, contains a plugin, and any audio that is played out of the lead vocal will be sent along to this channel if we've got some positive value here, if we've got some kind of a value sending, because right now it's at minus infinity. So let's say we would put up a certain amount, maybe minus 20 dBs, which adds a gentle little bit of reverb to this vocal. And then whenever we play back this channel, audio will be sent out of this channel and it will also be passed along to our send channel, which in this case is a reverb effect, and it will also be played out through that channel as well. So that's why this is called parallel processing, because you're processing the signal in parallel. You're playing out the main channel, and then you're also playing some of the signal out through the channel which has the effect. So I hope you enjoyed those tips on how to create group channels and send channels in Logic, and I'm sure you'll find it to be useful when you're working on your projects. If you'd like to expand your audio production skills, we offer a variety of training courses through our website at intomusic.ca for beginners, intermediate, and advanced levels of audio producers. To find out more about us, you can also go to facebook.com slash intomusic.ca. If you have any questions, or simply want to take advantage of some of the articles we have on our feed, you can go and find me on Twitter at Andrew Yankiewski. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can find weekly tutorials in Logic and other popular digital audio software production platforms. I'm Andrew Yankiewski. Thanks for watching.